Hey everybody, my name is Bobby Chu and I'm the next ProCo Challenge judge. Be sure to follow ProCo TV on Instagram for rules and prizes. Good luck everybody. Hey everybody, my name is Eric Gist and I'm going to be judging this month's Proco Challenge for Zombify the Proco Crew. So uh, let's start going through some of these images here. I like this image a lot. It's got a great style and zombification on it. We've got some nice asymmetry, a fair amount of gore in there, which is really cool. And it's definitely pushing that creep factor because you uh, pushed a child zombification so much. If I were to critique one thing, I would say to work on the edges and values a little bit more to try and push the overall form and volume of the image. So that would be my probably biggest uh, critique on it. But overall, really cool image. This is a pretty cool one. Nice uh, ink wash or marker technique with the uh, pen and ink and definitely identifiable as Stan, so the likeness is really good. My biggest critique on this one would probably be to work on the anatomy of the hands a little bit. The anatomy of the hands feel a little bit soft, a little bit sausagey. So getting in there and learning your hand anatomy a little bit better, and even your facial structure anatomy, could probably use a little bit of work. But overall, really nice image, uh, good value control. I like the uh, juxtaposition of the warm and cool ink washes, so that's really nice. This one's got a nice composition to it and uh, definitely a father-son homunculus zombie vibe going on, which is pretty neat. I would definitely uh, spend some more time on figure drawing. The style on it and the stylization and the zombification is, is pretty cool, especially with the sort of bony protrusions coming out. But definitely get in there and get some more figure drawing and uh, study your anatomy a little bit more. And this one's really nice. It's really good. Strong use of technique, strong use of texture in it. The anatomy works really well. The likeness is pretty strong on it, even underneath the zombification. I like the asymmetry. Um, I'm always a big fan of asymmetry in zombification, as if uh, one side has decayed more than the other. As far as improving it, maybe do a little bit more studying of the structure of the face around the mouth and chin area. I mean, it works as far as a zombie goes, but uh, learning a little bit more about the, uh, the actual specific anatomical structure of the face is going to really help you a lot in sculpting out uh, especially the, the nose, mouth, chin area. This is a cool piece. A lot of nice dynamics in it. I like the storytelling that's involved. It's got the sort of walking dead nod in it, which is, is pretty cool. Cool stylization with the zombies. Multiple figures in there all composed pretty well. If I were to give one critique on it, it would be to try to push a little bit more atmosphere in it. So as the figures move back into the distance, try to push them back into the distance a little bit more. So for instance, the back zombie, he could be misted back a little bit more. And even that crypt in the background there could be almost just silhouetted a bit more. So push a little bit more atmospheric perspective into it would be my biggest critique on here. Because I love the sort of bordering on animation style, that simple sort of cell shaded effect to it but you can really still push a lot of that atmosphere, maybe even do a little bit more painting on the background to push some soft edges to give it a, almost an animated painted background even. But it's a cool piece, really nice. This one's really creepy, I like it a lot. This probably gets an honorable mention for me. It's a really, really good piece. It definitely has that almost like Japanese horror movie vibe to it, just because of the really subdued, sort of almost melancholy feel to the overall image. So yeah, just really, really good piece. Love the stylization. Probably my only critique on it is that the edges feel a little bit too digital to me, meaning it's got a lot of those sort of telltale digital signs of blending and softening and opacity settings that give it a sort of overly slick look that I'm not particularly fond of personally, so you can chalk that up to a personal taste. But overall, it's a nice piece. It's got a great feel to it. The uh, mood and stylization to it and the subtle zombification always makes things pretty creepy to me where things are just a little bit off and it's not overt. I mean, I like the sort of over-the-top zombification. It's a lot of fun, but when it's subtle, it's definitely a creepy vibe to it. So yeah, really nice. And even the fact that even the little teddy bear is uh, zombified is pretty cool. Nice little touch. This is a really cool piece, especially with all the close-ups. I'd like to see a little bit more atmosphere towards the edges of the composition. If there's one thing that I would critique about the lighting is that it feels a little too, I mean, it clearly has a spotlight, 
but at the same time everything is kind of equally lit a little too much. So I would like to see that lighting fall off towards the edge of the composition, things soften a little bit more so you'd keep Stan and his son in sharpest focused and brightest lit, but then all the other characters sort of fade towards the perimeter as you get further away from that focal point. One critique I often have of digital work is that it has a very telltale look to it that feels a little too slick and this doesn't have that look. It's not so much that I'm not a fan of digital work because there's, there's a lot of great digital work out there, but I don't like it when the digital tools are too evident and you can spot things like the smudge tool or dodge and burn or uh, the clone tool, things like that. If you can spot them too easily, then it kind of takes me out of the image a little bit, but this, is, this has a really great texture to it, nice grit. This is a cool piece. I mean, really aggressive. It's got some pop to it. My critique would be to work on your edges a little bit. Everything feels a little too cut out. Everything is kind of hard edged, but it doesn't feel intrinsic to the style. I mean, it has kind of a painterly style, but then the edges are all very cut out and those things are contradictory to me. So as you're going through on a piece like this, if you're gonna go with that painterly style, work those edges and, and get more of a wide range of edges. Like, especially along that hairline, the hair feels a little bit pasted on. So try to work that in a little bit more. Try to roll the volume along the forehead so it's not quite so flat lit. And the wrinkles give them a little bit of form. Right now they're just sort of lines creased into the form rather than actually having the roll of a wrinkle. But great stylization and great pop and great intensity to it. Cool little movie poster montage going on here. It's got a great feel and great harmony to it. It feels more like a comp, so I'd like to see some areas of refinement and finish on it a little bit. So I guess that would be my critique is that it just feels a little bit unfinished. It doesn't just feel loose, it feels unresolved and unfinished a little bit. But I love the overall composition and color feel to it, really nice. I like the sort of throwback zombification. It almost feels like an old Italian horror film. It looks like prosthetic work, I guess, basically, in a good way. It doesn't feel like digital makeup or digital effects, which when done well work great but uh, I'm just a big fan of the old prosthetic makeup and this has the feel of that. So you definitely capture, I think, what you're going after in the image. And I would just say that it needs a little bit more refinement, a little bit more polish, and it's, it's got a really cool feel to it. I like the way that it transitions from warm to cool from bottom to top. So really nicely done. Yeah, that's a good piece. This piece is great. Um, and I know it's a, it's, it's a nod to one of the, uh, the Draftsman episodes. Marshall, I think, come with Mama. Is he mistaking me for Mama? No, Marshall says Marshall does something with Mama. What does Marshall do with Mama? Boy, this is getting dangerous. Wow, I have never been the mailman nor the milkman there. <laughs> Wait, what? Got a great sense of depth and atmosphere to it. Keeping Marshall and the background elements back there really sort of ghosted back and low contrast and soft edge. Maybe that could be pushed even a little bit more but it's in there and it's working great. And as the elements move into the foreground, they're becoming sharper and more in focused. I like that volumetric beam of light coming in and hitting the foreground elements while still keeping them primarily in the dark. It's really clever because what it does is it separates them from the background elements, but at the same time ties them together as well. So it's a very tricky thing in composition sometimes to keep things layered and separate, getting that foreground, middle ground, background element to an illustration without making them feel artificially separated. And so what the artist has done here is middle value in the foreground, dark in the middle ground, and then light in the background, but then has that volumetric light sort of threading through all of it and connecting it all together, which is really cool. Probably the only thing I don't really like about it is that the edges feel a little bit plasticky. Again, kind of a little bit of that digital look where things feel a little too slick, too polished. And that would probably be my only real drawing complaint about it. I would like to see a little bit more grit added into it, maybe some different brushes or a textural overlay or something like that, just to kind of mess it up a little bit. It just feels a little too slick. And then the zombie hanging from the ceiling doesn't quite work for me because it does feel like it's literally hanging from the top of the composition. But I love all the little nods to everything that's going on. You know, you've got the little clip down here at the bottom on the, on the smartphone. You've got the Proko skull on there, which is really cool. But again, some of that just feels sort of digitally pasted in. Oh, he's even got a little step-by-step -step here. Yeah, see, some of the elements I actually even like better in these early phases, like that tabletop. I would have left more of that crude 
rough painting in there. So you have that in there. So yeah, just let some of that show through. Don't, don't hide your process so much. This is a really neat piece. The colors are interesting. Good stylization, good characterization, good composition, good idea. Probably the only thing I, I would say again is mess it up a little bit. Get in there and have some sinew stretching over the rib cage. Have blood more spattered all over. Like all this, all the blood is very sort of strategically placed on it. The chains are pristine, like they just bought them from Home Depot. Lose some edges. Right now the silhouette is cut out a little too much, which I've talked about before. So losing some of those edges into the background in the shadow. Don't feel like everything has to be explained and spelled out. Really having those figures emerge out of the darkness would work a lot better. Having a little bit more fluctuation in the color. Stan's just a little bit too yellowy green all over and his sun is a little bit too flat blue. So get a little bit more modeled flesh in there, a little bit more variation of color, break it up a little bit more. But the anatomy is working reasonably well. I'd like to see maybe a little bit more definition in there with things like the lat and the serratus or show that they've rotted away one or the other, but they're just sort of conspicuously absent. So just little things like that. And then I, like I said, more regularity, like along the, the wounds, they're just, they almost feel more like they've been amputated and not gnawed off. Get a little bit more variation in those wounds and really tear up those edges. And that can add a lot of really strong believability. Again, texture. Big fan of texture in pieces like this. This is a nice drawing. Yeah, really nice drawing. Good, good technique. Probably uh, my only critique on this. I like the uh, stylization. I like the zombification. I like the little bit of cartooniness to it is really cool. Probably my biggest critique is how just sort of random the lines are. They don't really add anything to the image and they're kind of distracting. They just add noise without any apparent rhyme or reason, especially down in the coat. In fact, I almost think this image would be served better if that coat were just a silhouette or overall darker to play down some of that texture. But how busy those lines are, it just keeps grabbing my attention and taking my attention to that coat where I want to be looking up at the face where the linear aspects are a little bit more toned down. But yeah, I just think that it's a little bit distracting all the hatching, but it's a nice piece, really good. That's cool, it's got kind of a cool like a 70s underground comic feel to it. It's really neat, that's a lot of fun. I like the asymmetry in the face. I like just the clear stylization. Almost the complete lack of attention to facial structure adds a creepiness to it, like a, a supernatural feel. It doesn't feel like you've necessarily gotten it wrong, just that it doesn't matter. And so that commitment to that style is really cool. And I've actually always been a fan of those old underground comics. So nice piece. Oh, this is very cool, very nice drawing. Um, this one would probably also get an honorable mention, really well drawn, good technique, a nice texture to the tonal application. But yeah, really nice drawing, good job, good solid facial structure, good abstraction of the hair, good intensity to the expression. It just feels really good and solid. It feels impressionistic, but not rushed or sketchy. It's got a nice looseness to it. So yeah, really nice piece. This one's got a nice feel to it as well. Is it, okay, so okay, so each character and then, okay, cool. So yeah, these are really, th these, these have a really cool style to them. Um, it looks like uh, maybe marker or colored pencil. I think, I think maybe marker on a textured paper. Difficult to tell for sure, but good stylization and good character to them. Even though that hand is very stylized, the structure is still there. I mean, it's really pushing it any more lumpy and I don't think it would work, but I look at it and it feels right to it and nice dimensionality to it. So really good. I like the balance of warms and cools in it. Really nice. The same thing, you know, most of the same critiques. The stylization is right on the border, but it's unified and harmonious. You know, it's consistent. There's an authenticity to it because everything is stylized in a very similar way that it gives me the impression, whether I'm right or wrong, it gives me the impression that you know what you're doing and you're choosing to stylize things in a very specific manner, but that you understand drawing and, and structure well enough to have a consistency to how everything is stylized. It's one of the things I've always liked about people like uh, Frazetta's work is that even though he does some unusual things, everything is stylized consistently. And so it gives the impression that everything he's doing is purposeful. I can't say I, I understand exactly how you do what you do, but when I look at it, it works and it feels unified and uh, and it feels intentional. That one's really cool too. A lot of the same stuff. So yeah, really nice pieces. Another nice drawing. Yeah, good technique, good solid drawing. I would like to see a little stronger separation between the light and the dark. I think your reflected lights to me are just a little too strong and it's flattening the piece a little bit. Great stylization and, and good likeness. The wounds are nice and sort of aged, diseased, like they're, they're kind of dried out at this point, which has a nice feel, like almost like a tissue paper feel. 
nice abstraction to the hair. But yeah, I would play down those reflected lights a little bit too much. And that's one of the big mistakes that people make in drawings is they lose that punch of the contrast. And in turn, that loses the punch of the three dimensionality. So play down that reflected light a little bit more. Another nice drawing, very good. My biggest uh, comment on this, again, would be a little bit in the contrast. It played on that reflected light, so similar problems. The composition bothers me a little bit because of the way that it's cropped. You just have this hand sort of growing out of nowhere and it doesn't feel intentional. I would like to see the cuff of the shirt designed a little bit better so that it feels like an intentional ending of the drawing and not like you just ran out of space because it shrinks down and then just sort of disappears without any rhyme or reason. Maybe design some of the collar and create a pattern connecting all that together to create an interesting vignette. Look at uh, some of the old like Golden and Silver Age illustrators and how they would vignette things, especially people like Leindecker or uh, Dean Cornwell. People like that that were really, really excellent at, uh, at clever vignettes. This is a cool piece, uh, a Frankenstein nod going on, which is pretty neat. I like the overall color feel. It feels a little bit static to me. I would like to see you experiment with camera angles a little bit more. And also, keep working on your figure drawing and your anatomy. The figure just doesn't seem to fit in three-dimensional space correctly, especially down in the legs. It just feels a little bit awkward. So keep working on that figure drawing. Work on your folds. Really study your drapery. So more work on the fundamentals. You've got a great style and a great interpretation of things that I really enjoy, especially in the colors. You've got a good knack for colors. But I think you need to go and work on your fundamentals a little bit more. Your secondary fundamentals, I should say. Your anatomy, your drapery, things like that. Perspective. A lot of the technical stuff that actually is a lot easier to learn. Just you need to put the time in on it. But nicely done. Okay, on this one, very clever. I dig it. I love going the selfie angle. It's, re it's very neat. It's very on brand, which is pretty cool. On this, I would say that technique-wise, watch your edges a little bit. I mean, you're putting some outlines like along the top of uh, Stan's forehead and some other areas along his son's shoulder to make things a little bit static. Get a little bit more fluctuation to those lines. On that hairline, I wouldn't even worry about cutting out that forehead. Let the hairs grow out of the head more organically like you did with the beard. Um, so yeah, just watch some of those harsh outlines. Get a little bit more variation in there and fluctuate it a little bit more. But cool piece. I like it a lot. Nice drawing. Very cool. Good stylization. My critique on this one is I'd like to see you go into one area and nail it down a little bit more. It doesn't feel like any area is really taking precedence over any other area. I don't really know where I should be looking. I think it would be really cool to go into this empty socket eye and go in and refine that a little bit more. Pull out some more hard edges and put a little bit more focus on that. Maybe on the teeth would be another area that you could go in and have a lot of fun with. So again, it just feels like it's about... 70% there. It needs that last 30% to really bring it home. But nice piece. Very cool. Good proportions. Good structure. Another nice drawing. So this is a good example of what I was just talking about. It's very loose, but then that eye is clearly where I'm supposed to be looking. That eye has some great refinement and finish to it. I love the abstract loose quality of the glasses. And there's even, it's almost as if the glasses are even zombified because there's an asymmetry to them. It's got a really cool feel. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, maybe he's, oh, he's actually hung. Um, so in that case, I would actually like to see that noose going around the neck and see that described a little bit better. That would make it make a lot more sense. But I didn't really see the noose going around the neck. So uh, just defining that a little bit more, maybe showing the knot over here just underneath the ear or jawline and then having the rope go around would help uh, resolve that a lot better. So nice, nice job on it. though. It's got a great feel overall. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say about this. Um, interesting <laughs> it's the traveling zombie going all around the world it's interesting stuff he looks like he's uh, taking in the sights and, and enjoying himself um aside from the the uh the axe in the head so <laughs> uh that's it's interesting it's interesting someone had a lot of fun with that this is really nice. Cool technique. I like the uh, penmanship or brushmanship on it. The intestines, they sort of are in a middle state right now. They're either too small or not small enough. They're either too defined or not defined enough. I would either drop them way back into shadow and make them subtle, or I'd really pop them out and have them bulging and hanging out of his body and really define them. That would be my critique on this. Push that a little bit more. And then a little bit more contrast. If you're going to lay in those tones the way you have, a little bit more contrast between the light and the shadow. The inking 
works great. The inking is phenomenal, great inking technique. But if you're gonna lay in those washes or those color flats, a little more contrast between the light and the dark. It also might have been cool to yellow those eyes a little bit so that they punch. Right now everything is, is very cool. Even the reds are cool reds. So I would maybe pop some yellow, almost like a diseased eye into that. That would make it really cool or rather make it really warm. That has a cool feel to it. It feels a little bit paint overy, whether it is or not, it has that feel to it. And that's just because everything is sort of uniformly smudged and blurry. This is another piece that would really benefit from going in and, and nailing down one area like that eye or the teeth or the nose socket, something like that to really add some definition to that. Again, it has that, that slick, smooth, blurry, sort of digital effect to it. A little bit more grit, a little bit more texture, and one area where you really nail things down would help a lot with this piece, but it's got a great mood. I love the warm, cool balance of the greens and reds or oranges, so that's really nice. I like the glow on the ear, some cool stuff there. Adding a little bit more grit and going in and finishing off one area would really help a lot. Oh wait, there's more here, so I guess it's just a little bit of a color shift. I actually like the one with the first one with the with the warm and cool balance pushed a little bit more personally. Oh, this has got a great style. This is a really neat piece. I was looking at this one earlier. This is another honorable mention piece that was right on the cusp there. So this is really, really neat. I love the rendering on it. I love the style. Everything feels very intentional. The mushroom rendering, all the lighting is consistent on it. Really cool piece. Probably my only critique on it would be a few lost edges would go a long way on this piece. I can see the perimeter of everything and it's really popping against the background and everything feels kind of cut out. You know, over on the left hand side there, don't be afraid to lose some of those areas into the background and not have everything quite so cut out. But really great, like even the mushrooms up on the left hand side, his right hand side of the head, but over on the left hand side, that would be a good opportunity to have the head casting some shadows across some of those mushrooms and have them going in and out of shadow would really help a lot. But really cool, nice stuff, a lot of fun. Watch your hand anatomy as well. The hands grabbing the baby around the waist could be worked up a little bit more. Kind of a stickler on hands. This is a nice drawing, really cool sketch. Probably my only critique, and it's not even so much a critique, it's just a choice. It feels a little bit like a late 80s heavy metal album cover where it feels overly designed to me. Um, I'd like to see more variation, like all the heads are very similar in size. It's almost like the band members were all arguing to make sure they were taking up the same amount of space on the album cover as everyone else so that no one is getting more attention than anyone else. They just, they just all feel uh, too similar in size. So designing that so that the heads are a little bit more unevenly spaced, a little bit more uneven in size, maybe even pushing some value difference. Again, pushing the, the five zombies in the background back behind Stan's son would help a lot. So just a little bit more variation. It basically feels like six nice drawings that are kind of pasted in together rather than one unified piece. But nicely done. Good job. A lot of good stuff in there. Good drawing on each individual head. Now we were talking some texture. There's some, is that painted on a wall? That is bold if someone painted that actually on their wall, but it kind of feels like it. Now I'm curious, because there's a lot of grit and texture to that, and it feels almost like it's painted on like a bedroom wall, but maybe it's just a heavily textured canvas. But it's cool, I like this piece a lot. It's got a really interesting, almost like a roadside attraction feel to it. Like if if they were like an undead museum, like on Route 66 or something along that, uh, those lines, like maybe Route 666 would have uh, this roadside attraction along the side about, uh, about zombies and this would be the sign outside advertising it. Yeah, really interesting. It's got a great feel to it. Nice drawing. It looks like it's probably digital, but you mimic marker technique very well. My problem is that there's so much work out there that kind of looks the same. I like stuff that feels more individual and more unique where I can see the artist's voice in that. And I see that lacking in a lot of work that is done purely digitally. But on the other side, there's a lot of digital work out there that does have a unique voice. I just feel like you have to work a little bit more for it because the tools work in a very consistent, replicatable way. You kind of get this very consistent, replicatable sort of style and finish to digital work that I would encourage people to try and push beyond that and use the tools, don't let the tools use you. And I guess that's the big difference. 
you see a lot more of that sort of uniqueness to pieces done with traditional tools because traditional tools are not as consistent. Each time you pick up a brush, it's gonna be a, a little bit different. It's like chaos theory. Every time there's slight variations in the materials that are gonna make each piece a unique piece and not so homogenous. But nicely drawn, good stylization, good anatomy, good zombification, good likeness. From a technical standpoint, it's working very well. So that's working a little bit better. Now that you put some color on there, you kind of laid back the shirt a little bit more, but that hand could still use a little bit more care. But I like it, that, that fixes a lot of the problem of you know knocking back that shirt, adding in some more wounds down there that works better. But that hand could still use another pass, I think. And watch your rim lights. Rim lights are not just a white outline. Look for how those rim lights fluctuate over the form. That can be a great tool, but if they're done too uh, shorthand, it, it almost is like a lens flare. Uh, I remember this piece. This is a great piece too. Really nice cartoony style. Probably my only critique, I love it. Great piece, works really well. Probably my only critique would be, I would like to see more fluctuation in your line work. It just, the line work feels a little too consistent. Go look at, uh, there's an artist that goes by the name of Cheeks, Sean Galloway. Go and look at his work and look at the way that he gets fluctuations into his line work because I think that would help you out a lot with these pieces. I think you'll like his style a lot if you don't already know who he is. Just a little bit more variation in the line work would help a lot, but cool, really cool piece, great idea, very clever, good composition, good posing. Yeah, really nice because I know a lot of those figures, if not all of them, are, are just made up. Um, so yeah, very nicely done. <laughs> This is a cool piece. Another piece that kind of has uh, that, now we're moving into the 80s uh, indie comic market. It's got a really cool feel like that. My critique on it would be, watch the proportions a little bit. His torso is, is on the main character is very narrow. I mean, the arms are almost as big around as his waist. So just watch that style a little bit. Watch the head, it's reading a little bit big, but that might just be because the torso is too small. But I love the technique and I love the pen work on it. This is a cool piece. A lot of neat stuff going on in this. Study folds and drapery a little bit more. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. It just feels like a piece of cloth just kind of thrown over it. Like he's got a dish towel over his shoulder. And it doesn't really feel like a shirt or drapery, even tattered shirt or drapery. But I like the technique. I like the splatter. The overall structure of the head is stylized, but still feels consistent and it works and everything feels intentional. Same thing with the hand. It's stylized, but it feels intentional and consistent within the overall piece. A really good job. <laughs> This is an interesting piece. Really nice, I, I like the technique, I like the style, I like the overall image. Work on your figures, work on your figures and your anatomy. You've done a great job with the mop and the mop bucket, and that actually feels in perspective, it feels structural, it feels solid, but then the figures just don't have that same feel. The heads are good, and also the texture on the sidewall isn't going into perspective. If those are glass partitions separating them, then the texture should carry through. Um, if those are supposed to be solid walls, and there's a cast shadow on them, so I'm assuming they're supposed to be solid walls. That texture should be in the perspective a little bit more. But cool piece, a lot of fun. A lot of great stuff going on in there. Lots of nice detail. Good stylization, good zombification. Watch your face structure a little bit more. It just feels a little bit soft, and that's good in places for the zombification, but then there, there's no real good solid structure to contrast that. And to get that zombification to work where part of the face is sort of saggy and melting, then what you need is areas where there's good structure in there and the eye socket with the open eye would be a good place to push that. The nose would be a good place to push that. The cheekbone would be a good place to push that. So it's a great design and great zombification. Just a little bit more real world anatomy and structure would go a long way to emphasizing the fact that the rest of it is sort of rotting and saggy. So again, that contrast, otherwise just everything feels kind of saggy. And when everything's saggy, nothing's saggy. That's a really cool drawing. That's got some nice technique to it. Nice directional shading. Nice value work. I would like to see maybe a little bit more contrast between the shadow and the light, but it's just enough. It does work, but I'd like to see that pushed a little bit more. Nice refinement in the focal areas, getting into those eyes, and as everything moves away from the eyes, it sort of, this is a good example of what I've been talking about on a few other pieces. The eyes are, are the sharpest focus, and then the nose, and then the ears and mouth, and then everything else, and you have this nice sort of dissipation of detail and contrast and sharpness as it moves away from those focal points, but really cool. Probably the best handling of the Mickey jammies too. This is a nice piece. And the same thing I've been talking about with a few other pieces is that the digital technique is showing a little too much and that everything has this sort of uniform softness. There's no real area of sharp focus that I think would bring it in, but overall the image, the color feel and the mood and the lighting 
and the zombification and stylization all works marvelous. It works really, really well. But I would really like to see you go into one area and really nail it down and finish it off. But it's got a great mood. I mean, the creep factor is definitely there. And the color is that sickly, dull, greeny, orange. It's just the color of ick. And it works really well. Um, so yeah, just going in there. Like on this, it would almost be neat to just go in that mouth and just, I mean, it's it's probably the sharpest area. Go in and really detail that out, man. Get glint on the teeth and tartar on the teeth and glisten on the gums and maybe even a little bit of saliva and just really get in there and detail that area out. Just like that other piece we were talking about where, you know, sharp area focus, everything slowly softens as it moves away from it. I'd like to see a little bit more, but overall the big feel is great. Even the, uh, the implied collar works well. Again, a lot of the same critiques. I think overall it works well, but the sharp edges just seem kind of random. There are like some random sharp edges next to the ears in the nose, but it doesn't really feel intentional where this is the focus and everything else falls away. But overall, again, good color feel. You have a great knack for color. The overall mood feels really good. Yeah, like so big picture, just as a proof of concept, it works great. Now we need to go in and, and make it a finished piece of artwork. Again, it's one of those pieces that there's nothing wrong with it, it's 70% there and that 70% is working really well. Now we need that last 30% to really bring it home. But nice piece, very cool. This is a cool piece, a lot going on. I would say that my biggest critique would be, I would like to see in the foreground, thicker line weight being used, thinner line weight as it moves into the background. Right now everything is kind of weighted the same way and it makes it a little bit jumbly where it's difficult to make out exactly what's going on. It's kind of hurting the depth of the image. Whereas if you start with a really thick line weight up in the foreground and then have everything sort of get thinner and thinner in line weight, it, it'll create atmospheric perspective. Even though you're very heavy on line work, it's a very sort of hatchy technique that you've got that works pretty well. You can still create depth even by using that line weight and having the line weight thicker in the foreground and thinner in the background. Great piece though, good composition, good design. That's a really great piece. A lot of good texture on that, good colors, good stylization. Watch your facial structure a little bit. It feels uh, just inconsistent and, and quirky. It's got a great technique, really neat. You know, like the nose feels like it's pointing in the wrong direction, but it doesn't feel like it's broken. It just feels like it's from another face. So just watch that facial structure a little bit better and you know, maybe work a little bit on your drapery. But other than that, it's got a great feel to it. Really cool. That's a great style, really nice. I'd say work on your anatomy a little bit and, and do a better job of, of photographing your work or scanning it in. But overall, it's really cool. It's got, a, it's got a great feel. Just work on your anatomy, like especially that arm anatomy just isn't quite working uh, very well. Even the bones on the, on the skeletal arm, not, not really the way the bones work. You get away with it because of the sort of interesting Mad Magazine kind of style that you have. But in my opinion, might as well get it right. And all the best stylized artists that I know can really draw, but everything is, uh, they choose to have that style. Some great technique, really neat. Some nice lost edges in there, and just the, just enough, just the right areas. I mean, I personally would push even more lost edges, but there's enough here that it really folds into the paper. Great texture, great technique. This is another piece though that I think would benefit from one area being taken up to a little bit more of a finish. Maybe one of the eyes and the glasses on one of the eyes being really refined and taken up to, you know, just another, 10, 15%. So this is a piece that I'd say is like 85, 90% there. It just needs that last 10% to really push it over the edge, but really cool piece. Some gutsy use of color there. Cool piece, nice dynamic. I would just like to see a little bit more care taken with those hands. There's some of the, the least finished area in the whole piece. And to me, hands should be second only to the face, sometimes maybe even above the face. It's just kind of right now you have the heads, which are really refined and then everything else is is super super simple i'd like to see those hands taken up to a little bit more of a finish but nicely done good job great capturing of the expressions that's a nice piece again i'd like to see one area taken up to a little bit more of a finish as we've been talking about that focal point just pick an area and, and dial it up i'd like to see a little bit more variation in the colors i mean there's blood on it but even the blood is sort of the same red all throughout the skin is kind of the same blue all throughout with very little fluctuation i'd like to see more not modeling but mottling you know, where it's kind of, you know, like decayed flesh where blood is settled into areas. Some areas are rotted more than others as the skin decays and because of translucent, it has more variation to it. That's what I would like to see on this piece is just a little bit more variation in the colors. And then one area, pick one of those eyes to really finish off. Cool piece, really neat. I like the stylization. There's just enough contrast between the two sides of the face with you really punched up that secondary lighting or reflected light. 
a little bit more lost edges would help, like especially up in the hair or around the ear um, would help a lot. And then a little bit more fluctuation in the colors. It's a little too sort of uniformly pinky on the flesh tone. Even if you're going for more realistic colors, I would like to see even uh, like people with noses and cheeks tend to be a little bit redder, lips tend to be a lot redder, bottom of the face tends to be a little bit grayer as it's heading towards the hairline of the beard, things like that. So just a little bit more variation in color and a little bit more lost edge. And as I mentioned before, hide your digital technique a little bit more. Get a little bit more grit and texture in there. You're doing a great job with it, but it just, it feels a little bit too much like you're doing what the tools are giving you rather than making them give you what you want. That's really interesting. It's got some good stuff going on. It's got a really interesting style. I would actually like to see this animated. It almost feels like it's moving and creeping and crawling. So a really cool piece, a nice variation of line weight, good stylization, good zombification. Watch your anatomy and your figure work a little bit. Spend a little bit more time with some life drawing. I know, you know, you guys are probably expecting to hear that a lot from me because that's what I do, but I know it's, it's helped me out so much in my work. Cool piece, really nice. Maybe go full value in one area. Uh, it might be the scan, but I'd like to see like one area where you really get to full black and it's not quite there, but cool piece, great atmosphere, really nice. Good drawing of Christian, I like that a lot, a lot of chaos. Normally I would say that background is too busy, but I think it works for the sake of this piece. Watch the hole in the collar. It's too symmetrical. It looks <laughs> it looks a little bit like a scrotum sack, to be honest. So yeah, that hole in the, in the collar, you know, give that a little bit more irregularity. It almost feels like it's consciously cut into there. And uh, I don't think that Christian wants a, uh, a ball sack on his throat. Just guessing. But it's a really nice drawing aside from that. And that would be an easy fix. But overall, nice contrast, good texture, good lighting. Um, nice zombification, all of it's looking really, really good. Nice cell shaded piece. I would like to see one more separation of value. Like the flesh tone of the kids in the foreground is too much the same as the flesh tone of the zombie in the background. I would like to see either the zombie pushed, pushed a little bit more into silhouette or the kids in the foreground pushed more into silhouette. But they're a little too much in the same value scheme and it kind of confuses the depth a little bit. It could have a lot more depth if you either push the zombie into silhouette or push the kids in the foreground into silhouette and had them in slightly different value schemes. The darks are the same and the lights are the same. The orange doorway really does a lot, but then the zombie sort of works into the silhouette of the kids in the foreground. Another nice piece. This is another piece that I think would really benefit from going in there and picking an area to finish off. I watched this video earlier. It's pretty cool, good stuff, nice finish. I feel like the edges, again, little cut out. The, the digital is showing through a little bit where things are just a little too cut out. I'd like to see some edges softened a little bit more. I mean, I like the kind of cut out of the head against the background, that works. But like, just a little too cut out along the forehead, a little too cut out around the tongue, around the opening of the mouth. So just a little bit more lost edge and blending in it. The texture works well, that I don't have a complaint with. But like, things just feel a little bit too outlining in places and too cut out. So work on that a little bit, but nice drawing, nice handling of the anatomy and the facial structure works great. Another more cartoony one. That looks good. Sans Sun is the best part. That's that's a, that's a great kind of little little piggy face. It's it's really good. But great characterization on all of them. I can still tell who everybody is. Maybe fluctuate that line weight a little bit more. It's almost like it's either on or off. There's no really thick and thin to the line weight. That would be a, a big improvement on this piece, I think. Thicken up that line weight on the foreground characters and let it get thinner to the background characters. Now that's nicer with the lighting layer on there too. That actually helps a lot. Even though I would still like to see the line weight worked a little bit more, that helps a lot with the depth. <laughs> I think that's Christian again. Is that the Christian reference again? Um, it, you made him look like Conan O'Brien. <laughs> Conan O'Brien zombie. That's pretty funny. Um, I like it a lot though. It's really good. I don't know about the, uh, the, the purple background. That's a little weird. I would tone that down. It's just, it feels a little too purple to me. But overall, you know, the edge work, the drawing works pretty well. Another piece where I feel like taking one area to more of a finish would help a lot and softening along that hairline so it doesn't feel like a wig. That's part of what makes it look like Conan, I think, is because of the way his hair just kind of sits on the top of his head. That's really cool. Another one that has kind of a throwback feel to it, really nice. The values are a little jumbled up. Remember to separate out your foreground, middle ground, background. Right now, everything is kind of rendered in the same value key. So keep that contrast up in the foreground and then have everything else drop back a little bit more as it moves back. I mean, you've got it a little bit. I think it needs more, especially in a graveyardy atmosphere like that. 
by the time you get back to those background gravestones, the, the ground and the gravestones should just be silhouette. But very cool, great stylization. Some more nice pen and ink work. I would use the direction of the pen strokes to define the planes a little bit more. Right now it feels a little random, like you just kind of picked a direction and went in that direction, rather than sculpting the form with the hatching. So maybe push that hatching in the direction of the planes a little bit more. Study the Asaro head to help you with that. But overall, cool feel, nice stylization. I like that bottom half of the face being dropped into silhouette and then just those teeth popping out. So really nice. Cool little sketches, almost like designs for animation. I like them. Yeah, they look like designs for, for a zombie animated series. Really cool, like a, like a Shaun of the Dead series or something. Okay, so then you took those sketches and took them to more of a finish. Oh, and levels of decay too, even. Oh, very cool. Yeah, taking up to a nice finish too. Yeah, nicely done. Good job. <laughs> that's very cool. I, I don't have much to say about that. That's 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 a really interesting piece. Yeah, it's got it's got a great style to it. Very neat. Knocking the boards off the windows with a little boob. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. Very cool. Zombie of love. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Nice style. This is a cool piece too. It, it's sort of a, an, an amalgam zombie here. It's really interesting. Right now, I would push that background way back. I think how, how bright lit and busy the background is is hurting the image a little bit. You've got a nice value separation, but there's just a lot going on in that background that doesn't really add to the image and also makes it feel like it's a bright, shiny day. So it, just darkening that up and dulling it down, I think would help a lot. But really interesting, you know, having them all sort of meshed into one big character there is, is pretty cool. That's a cool piece, really, really interesting. I like it a lot. You know, there's enough brush work and, and grit in there that I can see your hand in the piece more. I, I can see your natural design sense coming through a lot more. Really nice piece. Right now, everything's kind of equally lit, which I think hurts the piece a little bit. And again, maybe some warmth in the white of the eye to give a little bit more variation. Right now, everything is a little bit uniformly cool. I mean, there's variation in the colors, but it just feels very uniform. Interesting piece. So look for more variety in your shape design, like these pustules that are sort of dripping down. All the little uh, pussicles are kind of very similar and all the little pustules are very similar. Look for more variety in there. The human eye doesn't like to see repetition, but for some reason the human brain likes to create it. It's one of the challenges of being an artist. So look for more variety in there, more variation. But it's a cool piece, it's really interesting. Got some color in there, that helps because you're getting some variation in color. But yeah, still in the shape design, I'd like to see a little bit more variety. Another interesting Christian piece. That's very cool, I like it. I don't really have too much to say, it's a neat piece. Got some lost edges in there. Got some areas of finish, some looser areas. Nice frog rendered up on his head. Watch the hair being a little bit too strandy. I'd maybe play down those strands a little bit. It kind of works because his hair is wet, but it feels a little bit pasted in. That's another neat piece, really cool. Good design, good shapes. I can even still see the likeness in there. I mean, it's very stylized, but I still see the likeness. The likeness is really done. I would actually like to see you take this piece to a little bit more of a finish. Oh, there we go, okay, I'm sorry. Cool, I like it. That's a neat piece, well drawn. Watch your drapery and your anatomy. I'd like to see you spend a little bit more time working on your anatomy, especially with the forearms, and learning a little bit more about how drapery works. Right now, they're a little bit just too tubular. There's a lot more variety to how folds work. Study that drapery a little bit more. Oh, that's a nice piece. This is another great example of that really sharp focus. I mean, it's a little digital in how it's done, but the intention is there and, and it's working well. I like it a lot. Um, so good focus on that face and then everything else kind of fading as it moves away from that, from the eyes, nose, mouth. Everything else is definitely taking second place to those. So yeah, really nicely done, good job. Nice, good stylization. Try to work on your line work. It's a little bit kind of choppy. I'd like to see more fluidity to the line work, but overall the drawing and the stylization is really cool. Oh, that's a great piece, really nice. This is another piece that I think a little bit more work along the perimeter, it's a little cut out. Kind of the way you've done down the lower body, do some of that to the perimeter of the head as well, especially up in the hair, getting a little bit more variation of that, but really cool, nicely done. The eyeball dropping down to the mouth is a nice touch. Yeah, nicely done, good job. Oh, there's the finish of that piece. So I would almost just like knock everything back and then go back in with a hot spot and a highlight in the eye and it would add a lot to that piece. Very cool, nicely done. More variation of the flesh tone. You've got a little bit of it in there, but I'd push some cools in there as well. Really good, very creepy. Cool style. Pick one area where it's a little bit brighter lit and then just take your, take your marker or whatever it is that you're using and lay it over the rest of the face so you have that. Again, a lot of these I feel like they're just evenly lit, like they're washed out. 
in reality, one area is always going to be more brightly lit, and even if it's not, it works better that way. Nice drawing. Really cool. I like that a lot. Actually, not too much of a critique on that one. It's, it's really cool. Nice stylization. Yeah, another honorable mention, I would say. This is a really cool piece. Really well done. Nice edge work. Another cool piece, looking great. I'd like to see a little bit more value because you, you kind of started with some value work, so I'd like to see that taken a little bit further. Either left out and let the line work do the work or go in there and get more value in there. But yeah, cool piece though. Nice perspective on the head. Another nice piece, yeah, interesting. Yeah, very cool. Again, another piece where I feel like going in and giving it one more layer of polish would work a lot, would go a long way on this piece. But it's a great piece. Again, it's one of those ones that's like 70% there. Just one more polishing pass to finish it off. But yeah, really, really neat. I like it a lot. Oh, the sketch is cool too. Yeah, nice. Yeah, another one that I think uh, one more pass, taking one area and finish it off. I know I'm saying that a lot, but a lot of these have good foundation, good solid drawing. They just need one more layer to take it up to that, that finished polish. Again, uniform colors. I'd like to see more variation in the colors. So just one more pass on it. Really neat though, definitely creepy. Nice drawing. Yeah, again, one more pass. Get that full value. It's coming up just short of full value. So going into that nasal socket and one of the eyes and finishing it off, but overall, really good. It's a, it's a really fun piece, good job. This one, I take more care with the cross hatching. It's a cool piece and the likeness and drawing are great, but the lines just seem a little too random and not like they're defining the form enough, but really cool piece, nice. This is going to be my third place finish here. Really strong edge and value control. So I mean, just getting down to the basic fundamentals of drawing, it's really strong in the structure of the face and the overall use of values and edges. So really strong piece. Uh, love the colors. The color harmonies are working really well. Um, it's sort of a, a subdued complementary color scheme, which works really well with zombies. I use uh, similar color schemes quite a bit. So. Yeah, really nice piece. Like I said, good value, good edge control, nice colors, good zombification and stylization on it. Maybe get in there and get yourself in a sorrow head or one of those anatomical skulls with the actual musculature on it and start boning up on your anatomy of your facial features a little bit more, especially in that lower half of the face. Second place. This is my second place. And it's a really cool piece. Again, complex composition, getting all the figures in there and having it all feel uh, unified and not cut out. The softening the edges around each of the heads to integrate them. So again, so that things don't feel too layered and cut out and they feel integrated and put together pretty well. Stan Sun is looking great there. Great depth. Maybe that hand could have been popped forward a little bit more. So that might've been a place where you want to push some hard edges along the edge of that hand to pop it right up in the foreground. It's nice to have those soft edges around each of the silhouettes to keep them sort of set into the scene together. But that means that you can pick one or two areas to really pop into the foreground and some hard edges right around that hand to pop it forward might help a little bit. But overall, really nice image, great texture. It even has a feel of layered paint, which is really nice. First place. This is definitely my gold. It's a great image. It's really strong. A lot of cool stuff going on in with it. Lots of depth, lots of layering of figures, good perspective in it. Yeah, just overall really, really nice. Good scale to the figures. Again, maybe that atmosphere, that depth could have been pushed a little bit more. Like these middle ground figures could have been pushed back a little bit more. The background figures could have been pushed back a little bit more, but it's there. It's working. Just maybe, you know, you're, I think you're pulling in your horns a little bit and I would have pushed that even a little bit more. You can get away with a lot of shadow and mood in a piece like this. So really nicely done though. Great job. All right, everybody. Um, great job. I think you did fabulous on all these. I mean, just a great consistency to the pieces. Um, they're all a lot of fun. I know there were a lot of pieces I didn't get to, but we had a ton of submissions on this. Um, so you guys did a really great job and we picked, uh, you know, some of the ones that were more towards the top with the first, second and third place. Congratulations. Um, and also the, uh, the honorable mentions, uh, great job. So those are in there and then just sort of a random sampling from everyone else. So if you didn't get selected, don't take that as a qualitative judgment. It's just, there were a ton of submissions to this stuff. Um, and I don't think anyone wants to watch a, a three hour, uh, video of me looking at other people's drawings. You should all be really proud of yourselves. Even, uh, 
no matter what, if you, if you turn in a piece, you put in a lot of work and a lot of effort and that should be uh, commended. Um, I'm not a huge fan of participation awards, but in this case, everybody who got a piece and submitted it, um, you, you topped anyone who didn't give it an effort. Um, so great job, and those of you who uh, didn't get around to submitting this time, make sure you submit to the next one, man. Push yourself, get, get some work done. But I just want to con congratulate everyone and say what a great job you did, and uh, congratulations on coming a step closer to the artist that you want to be.